film, and several are listed in your program. Our third nominated film is The Iron Lady. Please welcome J. Roy Helen. Roy is credited with uh, Mrs. Streep's hair and makeup. This is the first Oscar nomination for Roy. And, it, and as an aside, Roy, am I correct that um, you have been uh, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Streep's makeup artist for 37 years? That's 37 years of beautiful films and beautiful looks. Roy joined us from New York where he uh, completed working on Great Hope Springs and has been traveling everywhere, as you can imagine, with Meryl Streep with all of her nominations. Uh, and we have Mark Collier. Mark Collier is credited as the prosthetic makeup designer. Mark is joining us from London where he is uh, shooting Rush and we'll be starting season five of Merlin. This is the first Oscar nomination for Mark. The Iron Lady was filmed in England and two weeks ago won the BAFTA, uh, the British Academy of, of Film and Television Award for makeup and hairstyling. <laughs> and Roy, did you have something you would like to say? to come because I heard how you talked about the actors when they're not here. <laughs> wow. Michael Gambon, Ray Fiennes, I gotta, I'm gonna get on the phone. Meryl, I understand this was the second film that you've done that involves some prosthetics. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, now, that's got to be um, one, a very courageous thing to do. Uh, two, you have to really have a tremendous amount of confidence in the people that are working with you. Mm -hmm. uh, because otherwise, as we've seen in other films this year, it doesn't work out as well. Um, <laughs> can you tell us just a little bit about that? I know you've been with, uh, with Roy for many, many years, um, and uh, you found Mark. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. I mean, I, I hesitated when we about whether we'd worked with prosthetics more than once because I remember I played an old lady in out of Africa, and we also did it in Bridges of Madison County, and we also did it in yes. But that, that wasn't prosthetics. There was prosthetics. Talk in, in the thing. There was prosthetics in out of Africa. I forgot all about that. And um, uh, takes a village between us. We have a memory. Half. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, uh, Bridges of Madison County was Stretch and Stipple. They don't consider that prosthetics. Oh, okay. <laughs> and um, Angels in America was also yeah. stuff put on. wasn't It wasn't molded. Oh, I see. Uh, <laughs> but you played Mamie Old in Evening, and mm -hmm. that was that was prosthetics. Full on prosthetics. And I had a lot of crap on my face for. Um, <laughs> You know, the one where my head turned around, whatever that was. Mm. Death Becomes Her. Thank you. <laughs> That's true. We knew we had to really think hard about um, uh, the process of covering four decades in someone's life and someone who's very well known. And um, so we, we interviewed a number of teams, makeup teams in, um, in England and just thought Mark's uh, portfolio and his general creative, just the, lying. what? Lying. Not lying, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the lying was particularly good <laughs> in the interview. No, we just thought, you know, you have an instinct about people. It's just like with actors. You just know it's going to work out great. And, and um, 
We were so grateful that we found you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I know that, you know, in comparison to other films, certainly in comparison to, to Harry Potter, this was a much lower budget film. You worked so wonderfully with, with the appliances, which a lot of people have difficulty. Did you have an opportunity to practice with that, work with that for a little bit? No. Uh, we did three we, full tests. Uh, one of the aging maker, wasn't it? And, or two in the end. We did yeah, two. two. We, we two of the aging movie they was didn't supposed to start that, in January, and then we started in November, and December we did tests in London. Two different, and we just kept taking things away. Yeah, but I mean, basically, we, we sculpted the neck uh, uh, appliance, and we took a mold of the whole face and neck because mm -hmm. we got the neck pretty close on the first test, wasn't it? It just really worked, the neck on the first Great. test. And, yeah. and then we, we sculpted, we were then able to sculpt different versions of the Can we show the, the first uh, clip? Because I think we can see that uh, sculpting actually on the, on the, the mold. So th this was a sculpture actually done by uh, Barry Gower, who was uh, uh, one of the uh, crew members and applied, helped apply the makeup uh, with me, uh, the prosthetics with me and Roy. Uh, next uh, clip, please. <laughs> <laughs> that was our house. Yeah. Our house, yeah. and this is all we have because we had $14 million for the movie, and um, so these are rented wigs. Uh, Peter Owen made lovely wigs, and they are now probably on the crowd in um, <laughs> yeah. in the Hobbit movie, but they're <laughs> gone. Uh, so this is the only time anybody gets to see them together, and this was um, my little workroom that I had in our little house, and I would come home every night and clean and reset and get up in the morning and have a cup of tea and comb them out and take them away. Um, and that's it. And there's actually one in the middle there that we didn't get to use because we did a whole series of still photography in one of the test days. And I had to cut one of the wigs really short for this one period in Lady Thatcher's life. And then they cut that out of the script. So I lost a wig. See the next clip, please. No. That's me taking the eyeglass mark out Whoa. because in between she would be reading or doing or whatever and then I would have to oh, pull that out and not get into this place. Don't tell everything. <laughs> <laughs> Next, please. Uh, this is me using one of my really tiny, subtle uh, <laughs> <Bludgeons>. pa painting brushes. <laughs> Uh, no, what I'm doing there is actually uh, taking shine off, uh, using a bit of anti-shine. Next, please. That's the... <laughs> now, that's the kind of reaction you want to get. Wow. That's the first picture that was released. It was about our second or third day of second filming. Second day of filming, because... And they wanted yeah. to release a picture, and they did. And they didn't know that it was going to be um, <laughs> yeah. as important as it was. <laughs> Next, please. Is that a great transition? You want to discuss this a little bit? Wh where did this come in on the, the film? This is when she's leaving the doctor's office and is uh, hit by the paparazzi as she's coming out of the Harley Street doctor's office. Now, Meryl, you what, I, You know, I really want to talk about this because this is really a great um, example of really <laughs> how much you did and how little you did. And I think that the balance of those two things is what uh, is the secret of a successful um, application and a, s a successful 
per ability to perform through those things. Because when I looked in the mirror, I saw me. And that was really, really important to me. You know, I didn't want to see something alien, like another blob of head that didn't belong to me. I wanted to be able to have my eyes expressed, but with two elements, the nose piece, which widens the bridge of my nose, which is very, very narrow, and the neck. Those two things create uh, this, this uh, similarity to Margaret Thatcher, but leave me complete freedom to live through the, 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 um, the makeup. I didn't think about the makeup. I saw my face, and that, that really helped mostly the other actors, because no one, there was never a hesitation or a, or a, people didn't notice the makeup. They, they looked and behaved as if I were an old woman, so much so that when I went out on the street one day, in 20 years, I've never been able to walk through London without <laughs> anybody looking at me. You know, I know, I know this, and I'm really used to ha how to how to do it successfully. Um, to hide, but I could walk straight down the thing, and people would avoid me <laughs> because that's how we feel about the elderly. And she was dressed in a very fancy Burberry raincoat in a Tony <laughs> part of town. Yeah. Wasn't so, a bag lady. I'm so grateful that to these fellows and Barry Gower, who, because it's just masterful collaboration. It really was. Let me see really the next really clip, please. Yeah, see, they can't claim any of that forehead. That's me. <laughs> now, that was something that I w thought was wonderful, because in the Bake Off, um, Rick Baker actually asked the question, was there uh, an appliance in the forehead? Um, and you said, no, there wasn't. And I got to thinking afterwards, you created that, Meryl, by raising your eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Because in the, in the shot before, two shots before, your forehead was completely um, smooth. So in raising your eyebrows, you had to be very conscious of that throughout, along with everything else that you were doing. But it also would seem to me that that would have raised her eyebrows, which in this case, what you're almost really wanting to do is drop the eyebrow. But it's interesting how this worked so well uh, and is so different than two shots before. Yeah, because we didn't even do any stipple uh, work. We did a lot of painting on the forehead, painting in all the, uh, uh, all the uh, edge spots and stuff. And, but around the eyes, we didn't use any stipple work or anything, any stretch and stipple. No, but Roy applied all the little things around the eyes that, that make it makeup. old age makeup, you know, the redness and the and the shadow and the deepening of the socket and all that stuff. Next clip, please. <laughs> but Mark did add those, there's a very distinctive line of brow that Margaret Thatcher has. And Mark added that, those two sort of deep furrows uh, uh, going up into my forehead he attached that to the nose piece. Mm. So uh, that really distinctive, she had, in the beginning, we wanted to, I wanted to have a whole brow because, <laughs> ah! <laughs> because if she would look, uh, she has sort of a predator bird's uh, mien to her face. Uh, it, it looked like a hawk or uh, a bird of prey. And, and that was the, an image that I was in love with. And we, we did go through the motions of trying to make that work. But That's Mark, right. can we, you talk we, about that? We, we made it, didn't we? And we had all the eyebrow hairs punched in. And, but we, we never even tested it. Just no. Because that first day, the, the small appliance just worked. The small it? appliance was all you needed. Mm. And we can see how well all these different wigs worked uh, 
you know, some of it so, um, so identifiable to her uh, in some of the younger ages, and, and it, it was just captured wonderfully. Her hair, her hair, hair, hair tooth are so documented. There's, you know, you just, I, I would uh, go every day to the wardrobe and find out what she was wearing, and then they would show me the picture of Margaret Thatcher in that, and crank the curl that way. <laughs> but talk about how you took the hair all out. Oh, well, yeah, we had... Oh, you're not supposed to? No, yeah. Oh. We, I, you mean dyeing all of this? Or no, no, taking hair, ripping hair oh, out, out of, of the wig. Well, in some of them, they needed to be the younger wigs. They needed the younger the wigs, they, they needed to be thinner. And then when those big, we, we had names for all of them, and the biggest one was called Gloriana. And um, <laughs> that, I still didn't have enough hair in it to make it uh, back home it big enough. And then what... I found when we were doing the old lady and we had to do the dinner party, and I was looking at, at pictures of Lady Thatcher now, and I thought, but her hair is bigger than when she was in office and the Gloriana days. And I realized that they actually have made her hair now bigger so that it's in the exact same proportion of her shoulders as it was when she was in office, so that it, her body doesn't look bigger. She just looks in the same proportion now at 85 as she did when she was 65. But there's so much air in it. You can see right through it, you know, it's sort of great. Next clip, please. <laughs> oh, this is after work. <laughs> <laughs> This is Team Maggie, the full Team Maggie. And then you can see very prominently the edge of the appliance. Yes. <laughs> I love this picture because to me it's toasting you, the audience. Yeah. <laughs> now also, I think this is a good one where we haven't mentioned, uh, uh, I think there's a set of dentures there, isn't there? Yes. Mm -hmm. the, uh, Margaret Thatcher had a lot of problems with her teeth over over the course of her lifetime. And in fact, when she began her life as a young woman, her teeth, her front teeth, receded in. They sort of, and yet we have, a, we have an iconic image of her with sort of buck teeth, with a separation. And so the decision was, should we or which would be confusing to the audience from the time she was young. And we decided since the youngest Margaret would be played by Alexandra Roach, a different actress, people might think it was a mistake, <laughs> you know, if her teeth changed appreciably from the time she was young till the time she was very old. So we, we pretty much stayed with the same appliance and the same look, uh, and that's, that's the uh, piece you see. Which and is what we those did. guys, what's this guy's name? Uh, uh, Chris Lyons yeah. uh, from Fangs Effects who made the teeth. He's great. This is the uh, older set, isn't it? We had two sets, the younger younger version. Yeah, the they were just the color was different, color but the was configuration changed. of configuration the teeth. Configuration was exactly mm -hmm. the same, yeah. We used that same principle with, uh, with the wigs too because Margaret Thatcher had m actually many different hair colors th through her career and we realized that the way the film was going to be edited together and cut back and forth and crossed, that they should all be in sort of the same value. So a week and a half before photography started, I stripped the color out of all the wigs and re-dyed them all the similar color because we couldn't make new ones. All right, let's take a look at this film clip uh, and see all this wonderful work together. Oh, thank you to, to Meryl Streep for coming here on what you can imagine is an extremely busy time with her nominations. Thank you, sir. And I think we're ready for the clip.